If you want proof that we're living in a sci-fi future, I've got three words for you. Robot Talent Agency. It might sound totally ridiculous, but believe it or not, this is now a real thing that exists in the same world that you and I currently inhabit. I'm Drew Prindle, and this is Robots Everywhere, a show where we chronicle the slow but steady takeover of our robot overlords and show you how they're making their way into practically every facet of modern life. Okay, so back to this robot talent agency. It's a startup based in Seattle, Washington, and it's called the Agency, like AI Agency, get it? It's whatever. Anywho, in order to understand what the company does and how it works, it's helpful if you understand how a normal human talent agent operates and makes money. So let's say you are an aspiring actor with a strong jawline and a rock and handlebar mustache. And to advance your career, you move to California and you hire an agent. That agent would then act as a sort of middleman between you and all of the movie studios and casting companies in Hollywood, and would use their connections to those studios to help you find acting gigs. So that way, if Paramount Pictures puts out a call and says, hey, we need somebody to co-star in a lighthearted rom-com about rival biker gangs that fall in love, your agent would hear about it and give you a call and be like, hey Chet, I think I found a role for you. Would you make out with Hulk Hogan on camera for $6 million? To which you would obviously reply, Hell yeah, brother! And then go in for an audition. If all goes well, you would get the gig, the movie studio would get the talent they need, and then your talent agent would get a small cut of that six million for coordinating everything. Everybody wins. This robot talent agency works in almost the exact same way. The only difference is that instead of humans, they represent robots, or more accurately, robotics companies that make the robots themselves. Seriously, that's the only difference. To be perfectly clear about what this company is and what it does, I want to stress that it isn't like some kind of practical matchmaker that solves serious real world problems by finding the right robot for the job. For example, it's not like somebody would call this company and be like, hey, I have dirty carpets, can you help me out? And then the agency would be like, oh, I've got just the robot for you, have you heard of Roomba? It's not like that at all. The agency was specifically formed to help robots become entertainers and make appearances in movies, TV shows, advertising, advertisements, and events. This company legitimately represents robots exactly like they're real flesh and blood entertainers. Now that's definitely a far out idea for a business, but the company's founders think that there's a ton of untapped potential in connecting the dots between the entertainment industry and the robotics industry. But don't take my word for it either. We actually had these guys, the founders of the agency, on Digital Trends Live the other day to talk about their vision, an appearance which they made in proper techie fashion by patching themselves in as avatars in virtual reality. Through history, you know, robots have played an important role in kind of media and entertainment, um, but they've always been uh, people in costumes. They've always been puppets or more modern wise, they've been computer graphics and 3D renders. So the transition that's happening here is the same way that you cast a person in a movie is now going to be the same way that you cast a, a robot in a movie. We're really looking to have uh, people use uh, and, and cast robots like um, Zero and One, our, our Boston Dynamics Spot robots, to just be fully practical. It's like that's never been done before in the history of film ever. Now I realize that might sound totally ridiculous, but it's kind of not when you think about it. Take Spot, the infamous quadruped robot from Boston Dynamics, for example. One of Spot's most recent videos from late last year is already up to 6.5 million views on YouTube. An earlier video of Spot, Dancing to Uptown Funk by Bruno Mars, racked up almost 6.8 million. Then there's this video of one Spot that opens a door for another Spot robot, which got 34.4 million views. I mean, sure, it's YouTube and, you know, it's internet points and whatever, but like, that video of Kanye West walking into a street sign, that only got 8.4 million views. Clearly, robots have some entertainment value. And Spot is just the most recent example. There are actually tons of other instances in the not so distant past where machines have acted as entertainers and generated quite a lot of buzz. A good example of this is IBM supercomputer Watson. In 2011, the company set up Watson to compete in a game of Jeopardy against Ken Jennings and Brad Rutter, two of the show's greatest champions. Not only did Watson crush these two guys, but Jeopardy's ratings soared during that time, and the whole thing helped IBM solidify its reputation as a leader in the world of artificial intelligence. A few years later, Google pulled a similar stunt with its DeepMind AlphaGo AI, which took on and beat Go champion Lee Sedol in a series of games held in South Korea and streamed on the internet. 200 million people watched these matches online. And with that in mind, it's pretty clear that machines have the potential to be entertainers, so 
maybe these guys behind this robot talent agency are actually onto something. Ultimately, time will tell if this is just a ridiculous business idea that'll eventually flop, or we're actually witnessing the birth of an entirely new industry that'll be huge in a few years. But regardless of how this plays out, it's still just a good gauge of how far the field of robotics has come in the past decade or so. If we've got robot talent agencies popping up now, what kinds of weird and wild robotic businesses will pop up in the next few years? All I can say is hold on to your hats, people, because robots are about to be everywhere. <laughs>